Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Floor Planner. My name is Bob. No, as mentioned, hey, I am here for customer success. I'm here for you all as you keep developing your technique and usage of the Floor Planner platform. And this little recording, uh, we do this monthly for you to talk about the new advances, the new features that have been added to Floor Planner um, in the previous month. So this is a video for October 2023. Let's take a peek and show you what has occurred in the past month. Um, if you do not know where to find those advances, they are on your desktop, um, under your dashboard. So let's go ahead and diminish my video for right now so you can see my entire desktop, see where we're going here. If you go over to your dashboard tab in the upper left hand corner, you will gain the right hand sidebar and in that right hand sidebar are the new features. They are listed in here. They happen instantaneously inside the platform. So if you just go ahead and go to the more button and new features, of course they're listed here, but if you go to more, it'll take you to another site where you'll actually see all of the advances, where you can just casually scroll through previous advances, maybe some things you might have missed in the past. A little bit, they're very quick little video snippets, um, which will certainly uh, refresh uh, your knowledge base uh, of knowing what has occurred out there inside Floor Planner. Um, we left off about the inner interface update, which had occurred August uh, 17th, and the exposure slider, and we were talking a lot about camera settings previously. And since then, um, the render quality improvements have occurred, uh, made further improvements on the default render and scene using the Blender rendering engine inside Floor Planner, and the settings have been improved to, to make your exports look even better. Even more realistic. Of course, they've been, they've been fairly realistic with the Blender rendering engine, um, but we're tightening this up even better. Hopefully, you've had a chance to explore those. But we want to go ahead and talk about the improved selection and copy functions. Um, if you've been in my webinars before, the live webinars or any of the recorded webinars, I've been speaking about how to make a selection window for copying and pasting between designs, between floors of a multi-floor project, even between projects themselves. Um, and it worked fairly well in, in the past. We had a couple two-step processes out there to capture the structure and then capture the furniture. Well, this has really improved. There's some really, really cool new tools. I think you're going to enjoy them. Um, so certainly, yes, improved selection and copy functions. So we're going to take a peek at that and also more options for the, the pasting of the selections. Um, copy paste, as I just mentioned, between designs, between multiple floors and even between projects. So let's go ahead and go actually into my support planner platform, take a peek, and let's open up a project. Uh, maybe something a little bit more complex out there, one of my demo projects maybe. Take a peek out here. We do offer a 2D, 3D settings webinar on Wednesdays. It's a live webinar that you can certainly register for. It's on your desktop, upper right hand corner. Those are always free. And this is a demo piece that I typically use for that. So if I go ahead and go to the project tab in the upper left hand corner, there are multiple designs in this project. I've got five different designs running inside there. And if I take a peek down here at the furnished floor plan, and drop in some furniture inside this particular design so we can take a moment and explore these selection features. Now, um, we've talked before that you can make a temporary grouping for moving furnishings. So if I wanted to, oh, maybe make a grouping of these two chairs, these pillows, these accessories over here. If you hold your shift key on your keyboard, your shift key and your left mouse click, you can make a selection window and just drag it over the items that you want to grasp. And once they're selected, you can, number one, move them because they're in a temporary grouping. 
Also, if you hold your S key on your keyboard, S on your keyboard, that will turn off the snap feature. Or just leave on the snap feature by not pressing the S key. And once they're selected, you can copy these items for this particular plan. You can flip them left and right. You can flip them front and back. You can rotate at 90 degrees both directions or delete the selection that you've made. Well, that was powerful, and we've kind of done that before in the past. Um, you also have the ability, don't forget, that you can select an item. And we can go over here and just go ahead and hold our Shift key and select another item. And go over here and select uh, with our Shift key another item. So you can add one item at a time also, instead of just using the selection window that I told you about with the Shift and left mouse click drag. Okay, well that was fine, but maybe you want to capture more than that. Process has improved. So now if maybe I want this entire plan and I want to select certain items that are in my selection window, this is new. So if I hold my shift and my left mouse click, I can drag out a selection window over the entire project. And now you've gained something totally new. Yes, we still have these features in here uh, along the tab bar at the top. But on the left hand side, you have the ability to choose what you are selecting in this particular uh View. I've got surfaces actually above the kitchen counter. I made some surfaces uh, to make some suspended ceiling areas. The furniture, of course, furniture being your general objects that are not structure. Walls, yes, the hate of the structure itself. I have no labels, no additional dimensions, and no additional lines. So it knows what's in my selection window, and I can start now changing this to say maybe I don't want to. Or maybe I do want the furniture, and maybe I don't want the walls. So you now have the ability to select up here as to which elements you want to have uh, selected down here. Now, once they're selected, certainly I can make a copy for the same design that I'm working on right here and put them side by side. I could flip. I can flip both directions, rotate 90 degrees both directions. And you also have over here, the selection can be rotated to a degree other than 90 degrees, or even raised from floor if there's items that need to be lifted from the floor. Or if you're just selecting walls, you can change the overall height of all the walls. I know some people have gone ahead and drafted out a room and, oh, we drafted it at eight feet ceiling height, wall height, and uh, it's actually 10 or 12 feet. So instead of having to change each individual wall, you can actually change the numeric over here with the selection, and it would actually change all the wall heights at one time. I find this extremely valuable. Now, maybe, just maybe, you want to go ahead and take the furniture from one project or the entire design, furniture, walls, maybe the surfaces, all of them from this one design, and take them to another design in the same project or another floor, another story of a multi-story project in the same project, or even leave this project and copy this to a brand new project that you're starting with another client, or even copying this and taking it to an existing project. What you do, obviously, we've made the selection window by using our shift and our last le left mouse click to make the entire selection window and chose what we want to select. With that all in place, do not, this time, select from this bar, this task bar up here at the top. In other words, just go ahead and use your keyboard. So now that it's selected, do not touch that tab bar at the top, just go ahead and use your keyboard to use the control C key. Copy. Control C. If you press Control C while the window is identified, it will copy what's inside that window as we selected it. And your computer will typically go ahead and retain that information until you go to a new destination. Your computer can hold on to one thing at a time. I think we've done this with other software programs, and it works also for floor planner. So we can do Control C at this point, and then go to either another design in the same project, or go to another floor in the same project, or close this project completely, open a totally brand new project and go ahead and hit Control-B 
control V is, control V is a victor, is your paste command. So if I hit like control C with this selection made here, control C on my keyboard, and then hit my back button out here, and I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this project completely. So let's go back to my dashboard homepage. And let's open up another existing project. Could be a brand new project, doesn't matter. And as I open up a totally different project, I'm going to go ahead and hit my Control V, V is in Victor, Control V, and say, now, we're going to paste it on here. Now, you have a couple options for the pasting. You can preserve the position exactly in the same placement based on the origin point that's up here on the previous project and place it in the exact same placement or go ahead and place it yourself by hitting the screen center uh, the screen center and here comes the entire project or everything that's selected and I can then move this into place and once it's in the right place I can just go ahead and click on the negative space of the room and it has deposited it from one project as a copy to a totally different project. I think you find this extremely valuable. Uh, shared information between projects, uh, assortments of furniture, groupings, rotations. Um, I find this really exciting because we, again, we used to have a two step process for this. And now I think we've really cleaned this up and given you even more powers, especially we've always been asking, say, but we just copy paste also surfaces that we created from one project to another. And the answer is yes, as of now, you most certainly can. So that, I believe, is going to wrap this up for today. Let's just go back and verify that with our list of updates. Certainly, that is just right where we have left off. So again, I uh, appreciate you being with me today talking about the updates for Floor Planner for October 2023. Looking forward to making another video for you for the month of November. We have, well, I think another really exciting uh, update that's coming out, um, which we'll be talking about, give you a little insight, it's on groupings. Um, just temporary groupings, though. So I'll leave you with that, and I'll surprise you with that next time. Appreciate you being with us again, and I look forward to seeing you at our next.